When it comes to rangefinder film cameras, a lot of people think you need to spend an arm and a leg to get good quality and a good build. And that's simply not true, you guys. So I wanted to make this video really to talk about two specific rangefinder film cameras that are both somewhat affordable in terms of rangefinders that cost under $200 each. But I know what you're saying, man. $200 still seems like a lot. And it kind of is. But you know what? 200 bucks is the max that I've seen these two cameras going for. And a lot of them are going anywhere between 100 bucks to $150. So without further ado, you guys, let me go ahead and just introduce both cameras. One, the Olympus XA and the Canon QL17 G3. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another King Japes video. Now, you guys know that I always vouch for the Olympus XA. And the Olympus XA, even though I say it's a point and shoot, really is a rangefinder because it has a full rangefinder system built inside of it. Whereas the Canon QL17 G3 looks a little bit more like a typical rangefinder camera. Both of these cameras have different styles. They both have different shooting experiences. Let me just go ahead and start with the Olympus XA first. And I want to talk a little briefly about this, not doing a full entire review on it, just kind of picking out all of the points that I feel like make it worth it for the 200 bucks that you might pay. All right, so if you guys have never seen this camera before, here it is, the Olympus XA. One fun fact is that it has the same lens as the Olympus Stylus Epic. So this lens right here is the same one you're going to find on the all hyped up Olympus MJU-2. It has a 35 millimeter 2.8 lens that is super, super sharp, and it's really good for both black and white and color. The rendering is beautiful. Now with that said, you have a rangefinder knob down under it, and the throw is super short. And that's really, really good for fast focusing and also not really having to worry too much about a focus throw. Like for example, on the Leica here, the throw is definitely not as long as like an SLR, but as you can see, it goes from one end of the camera to the other. Whereas on the XA, if you look very close here at the knob, it's like it's focusing is nice and quick. It has a super sharp lens and you also have an aperture priority selector. So you can select what aperture you wanna shoot at from 2.8 all the way to F16. One cool feature as well with the XA is that it has a clamshell design as well as the option for a flash. So you can buy the A11 or the A16 flash and I think the A11 is the compatible one but I personally use the bigger A16 flash which sticks out just a little bit more and you know you're gonna have a nice little flash and rangefinder in a small camera body. Yeah, the size really makes it really good for travel. It makes it really good for, you know, fun street photography, party photography. If you're going out with some friends and you don't wanna bring like a serious setup, pop the flash on there, throw it in your pocket and bam, you got yourself an extremely good film setup. And as for the shutter button, man, it's just that little red kind of piece of plastic right there. And what's really cool is it's super quiet. Like, listen to this. The viewfinders are big and bright, and on a lot of XA models that I've seen personally from my copy and my friends, they all have nice and bright rangefinder patches, which is very surprising for a camera this old made from Olympus. Now, although this camera is super good, there are a couple of downsides, and a lot of these are very subjective. Uh, and the first one being that the focus knob here is in an awkward position. Personally, I guess, man, it, you really got to just have a nitpicky mindset to really think this is a negative. But I can definitely see if somebody's, you know, used to shooting bigger cameras. But the other thing, too, is that it's very small. It's probably the size of my hand or smaller than the size of my palm here. And, uh, you know, for people with super big hands, it could be a little uncomfortable to shoot with. And also, you do need a battery to operate this. It takes the two LR44 batteries. I think they're called like the Energizer 357s uh, that are, you know, you can find them from little grocery stores. But if you can live with that, man, the XA is an amazing, amazing rangefinder camera. It's a cult classic and you're getting full frame in such a small camera here. It's insane, man. So I would recommend this 100 percent 10 out of 10. now on the other hand if you want to go for something a little bit more traditional that is a little bit bigger uh the canon ql 17 g3 might just be the camera for you 
Now, as you guys can see, it has more of a traditional look and feel to it. And that also adds into the overall shooting experience. I want to compare my QL17 to similar to what shooting a Leica would feel like. On the top of the camera here, it's very minimalistic. And the first thing that I want to point out, folks, is that you actually have your lens sticking out. And this could be a good thing for a lot of people, but it could also be a negative in other people's minds because it does add a little bit of size to the camera. But again, it's more of a traditional feel, so having that lens there honestly feels really, really good. Now, the QL17 G3 does require a battery to operate the light meter, but it's only going to operate the light meter. This camera can shoot 100% without a battery, so it's completely mechanical. Now, with that said, I never usually have a battery in this camera because you need to have a conversion thing and it's just a whole mess. I prefer probably just getting an external light meter like this one and just slapping the damn thing on there and bam, you have a new light meter. But what's really cool about this camera is it has a super sharp 40 millimeter 1.7 lens. And this lens being 40 millimeter is five millimeters more narrow than the 35 you're gonna find on the XA. That could be a good thing. If 50 millimeter is, you know, your four you're gonna have a lot better time shooting with this camera than you will be with a 35. 35 is just a little bit more wider and yes there is a huge difference. But with that said man this has a max aperture of 1.7 which is gonna get you some pretty nice shallow depth of field if that's something that you were into compared to the 2.8 and the XA. The max shutter speed on this thing is 1 500th of a second just like on the XA uh, and overall man if you're gonna compare both of the cameras here all it really comes down to is shooting experience and focal length. If you are a 35 millimeter lens shooter, go for the Olympus XA. It's gonna be nice and small. You're gonna have a nice 35 millimeter lens on there. But in terms of 40 millimeter or maybe like a 50 millimeter equivalent, uh, the Canon QL17 G3 is gonna be a lot better for you, especially if you want a more traditional feeling rangefinder uh, that is gonna have an actual lens that you can focus on. A couple of things that I do not personally like about this camera though is that the focusing mechanism and tab is going to be on the left side of the camera, which makes sense because your thumb is going to be right here when you're focusing. Also in terms of external flash, you are going to be very limited. You do have a hot shoe here though on top. But one thing though I do really love about the QL17 is the easy load system on the back. So you throw your film in here, you string it across, and once you string it across right here folks, all you got to do is clamp it down. There's going to be this little bracket that holds the film in place. You can close the door and then you're going to need to advance the film three times for it to actually start your cycle. So at the end of the day, folks, the decision is really up to you, man. Do you want to go for a traditional feeling rangefinder? I'd go for this one. And if you just want something that is nice and small, it's going to get you really good quality. And both cameras are going to get you excellent quality because the lenses are really sharp. Either or will do great. Just know that this one needs battery. This one has aperture priority. This one is fully mechanical and you are going to need to find a way to meter if you are not using Sunny 16. But the choice is yours, you guys. This is the Olympus XA and this is the Canon QL17 G3. Two really, really good rangefinders under 200 bucks. And I would highly recommend both. So thank you guys, man, for tuning in into this episode i hope all right what's going on you guys so i'm about to go shoot some b-roll for uh the video that you guys just watched so you guys already have seen it but as i was pulling the cameras man i want to show you guys something crucial really quick before we end this video i want you guys to just take a look at the different sizing of the cameras so i'm going to be comparing some of the sizes here starting off with the xa and then the olympus stylus so when you look at the two side by side if you guys have ever held one of these cameras before the olympus infinity stylus it's a fairly small camera, uh, but it's definitely not the smallest point of shoot that you could have. But when you compare it to the XA, the XA is still substantially smaller. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, the edge is actually, yeah, substantially small. You probably get like a millimeter or two uh, just from the sides. It's also a lot boxier, so it could fit in a little bit more of a confined space, I guess you would say. Uh, but that's just the comparison between the Mu1 and the XA right here. Now looking at the QL17, you guys, the QL17 is not that much smaller than the Leica M2. When you put the two cameras side by side, the M2 is only a little bit bigger by like maybe two to three millimeters, two centimeters, I don't know, but a lot boxier as well with the QL17 than the Leica. Uh, but in terms of like overall on the top here with the lens and whatnot, 
The cameras look very similar, especially when you put this lens hood on top of the QL17. Um, they almost look identical from the top. So that's something to keep in mind as well if you are looking into getting a Leica. The QL17 does not look bad from the top angle view whatsoever, man. It's honestly a really handsome camera. We talked about it in the video, whichever one you prefer is your go. But the choice is yours, you guys. Both cameras are gonna do well for you. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of a size comparison for anybody wondering, you know, what the sizes are like compared to other cameras. Yeah, that's gonna wrap it up, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, man. Like, comment, subscribe, and also, Hit me up over on Instagram because I will be selling a couple of new film photography items throughout the week, man. So thank you guys for tuning in. As always, Minolta Gang.